G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I am very interested to see how poorly my attempts at drilling a drivable path down to this nickel are going to be. Uh, or going to end up, I should say. It's something I was hoping this setup would actually work for, but I'm really not sure how well it's going to end up. Normally when I drill a pathway down to something underground and I'm using a rover based miner, I'll right click drill, but I'm not sure that the Goofy can actually manage that. I think if I right click drill I'm going to end up too deep, and so it's all just going to go horribly wrong anyway. So yeah, not sure how this is going to go, but I am very keen to find out. I'm not quite sure why I decided to drive here all the way at night, but it's not too bad. Seems like because of the giant gas giant up there, giant gas giant, hmm. uh, because of it, there's enough ambient light around that even with screen gunk be gone, uh, am I going this way or am I going the wrong way? I think I might be going the wrong way. Even with that, I still get a little bit of ambient light that means I can mostly see what's going on around here, or at least see enough to get by, maybe? Or maybe it's just not gotten dark enough yet. Maybe it will. I feel like it's not as bad as it's been in other playthroughs when it gets to nightfall. Ah, oh, No. Oh no. I just realised a problem. I don't have an ore detector on here. Which means I'm gonna need to drill down there by hand. Make a GPS. And then I can actually drill to it. Dang it. Okay, the nickel is straight 20 meters down from here. I wonder if I, instead of starting from up here, I wonder if I could get, start down lower there and drill it straight into the mountain. That might actually work. I'll drill off to the side here just in case I do end up going through the snow or need to drive through this snow at a later point. I think I'm safe from that ladybug. I'm pretty sure it'll go where I want it to. All right, let's go straight down to the nickel. I'll make a GPS where it is. And then I'll drive around and see if there is a better spot on that low slope for me to go straight into the nickel, rather than having to dig down and try and make a slope that's drivable. So I'm not confident that I can actually pull that off. Aha! Nickel. Alright. Let's just make a GPS where this is. Even though the deposit is bigger than this, it should help me get to where I need to. Nickel for mine. Splitzy, you idiot! <laughs> what are you doing drilling straight down in a game without jetpacks? Ah, oh, how dumb can I get? Oh, really? What? Why? Why would I do that? I know why, because I've been playing a little bit of vanilla lately, and I've reminded it's made me forget that I don't have a jetpack here. And because I was on the alien planet, <laughs> got myself all turned around. That was still that was very dumb. If I'd run out of power down there, I would be dead. Nickel, let's. See if we can get down level to that. Okay, so that's a little too deep. I kind of would want to be halfway up the mountain, so maybe this isn't going to work. I'm standing level here. That's about horizontal, so it's going to be slightly uphill to get to it. I might. Hmm. Let's just have a wander and see. I think all this cliffside's too steep. I think it will actually make life more difficult. No, Goofy, don't run away from me! No, 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 no. And don't run me over when I try and get in you. Okay. I, I think my idea was sound, but the location isn't suitable. I think I am going to have to just drill in through... What's in that, that boulder? Do I have that boulder marked? I think I do. I remember marking an iron boulder. Abandon that plan. <laughs> it's not going to work. I will instead... Just pick a spot along here to start drilling into. Maybe if I start back here, where it's relatively level, I think I'm going to need wheel chocks or some method of locking the brakes on my trailers or any detaching I do on any slight slope is going to be a big problem. Uh, I had a thought about how I might be able to get the trailers to lock in position. I was thinking it might be possible to get them to do that if I uh, if I put a remote control block on them and then access the remote control block and when I do that I should be able to 
lock down those wheels as I'm controlling just that grid and then get back to controlling the Goofy. It may require me doing the detachment first, I'm not sure, but I suspect that's going to be something I'll have to consider in the future. For now, I think it is time to unlock. Hope that the trailer doesn't roll away. And start attempting to drill this mine shaft. See how deep it goes if I do a right click mine in this position. I do sink a little bit. Yeah, how deep? Ooh, it's a bit much. I think I'm going to have to do this all left click, which is going to accumulate a lot of stuff. Make this process much slower, but oh well. I suppose once I'm completely full, I should just be able to drill anyway. Because I won't accumulate anything. Yeah. I'll just fill myself up and just left click drill and just waste all of the stone that way. That makes a lot of sense. Assuming I can overcome the weight of it all. Oh, no way. This is quite awkward and uh, right, I am right now very glad for those new skate wheels at the back. Because I am clearly using them. Goofy was really designed more around boulder mining than underground mining, so <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to be quite up to the job here. I've also started this a long way back, so I have a long way to drill. I'm not sure if this was a good idea. Oh, maybe I can just right click like that. Just do it bit by bit. Oh yeah. This could work. As long as I get high enough up the next bit of the slope. It'll make for a slightly awkward um, drive in and out, but it feels like I'm making progress much faster. I mean, I am making progress much faster, and it feels like it's staying level enough to work. So what I'm basically doing is every time I right click with the drills, I'm clearing out a nice little curved shape, and I'm trying to drive up the curve on the other side as far as possible so that I'm not dropping down low each time. And it seems to be working because I've, over the past 50 meters of progress, I don't feel like I've gotten any further below the height of that nickel for mine marker. In fact, I may have even gone upward, which is probably better because it's going to be easier to go downward when I get close. Let's just have a look at this outside. And that's not too bad a surface to go along. Should be able to drive back along that quite easily if I can open up a nice little turning bay down the far end. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite pleased with this. This actually works fairly well and is a whole heck of a lot easier than doing it with um. Oh, it was only 50 meters away, even better than doing it with a left click mind. And quite a few people lately have been mentioning, well actually since the very beginning, have been mentioning uh, that I should have some place to run away to from the enemies. And I think any of these underground mines will serve that purpose quite well. So once I get this thing properly set up, I should be able to move the survival kit down here and keep it protected from any drones that come by. And maybe if I put a couple of turrets by the entrance, I could run away to here with the motorbike, chasing, getting all the drones to chase me here. And they'll hopefully get taken out by those turrets without putting anything important at risk of harm. Yeah. So let's rush. I think I'm quite safe from that. That's quite a long ways off. Oh dear. That was almost bad. Oh, I'm at the nickel. Uh, stop trying to flip me over. I think I must have gotten rid of all of the uh, stone. But I'm at the nickel. That means GPS. Let's get rid of the nickel for mine. Don't need that. Now we'll just make a marker at the entrance to the mine. Uh, what have we got inventory in here? Drills are still full of ice. <laughs> I've got so much ice. Ah, uh, dear. I kind of don't want to throw away the ice, though. Hmm. Maybe what I should do, instead of throwing it away, Let's try and, while it's getting used, clear out a bit of a turning bay here. So the Goofy, once it gets loaded up, is actually pretty hard to control. Not impossible, but it is difficult enough that it could be a problem for later. Do you 
because that thrush did get close. I think I'm still safe, but I hope. There's not a lot I can do from here because I can't... I'm not going to be able to get the Goofy out of this hole quickly enough. I'm definitely going to have to put turrets at the entrance then. Because if something comes across and spawns a drone, it'll come after me. Which means it will go after... And there we go, it's passed. But it means it would go after the trailer. So that could be a big problem. I feel so much more industrial with that noise from the hydrogen engines. It's, I imagine it's the diesel engine that they modeled, uh, that they modeled the uh, audio for that off. I was able to turn around so that I could face out, but I want to just grab a bit of nickel before I go and attach the trailer. This hasn't gone too badly. Like, I was expecting this to take a lot longer to set up. This has only taken me a few minutes to get into position. I mean, this is all in the grand scheme of things, because everything in this series takes a bit longer due to the challenges that I've set up. It's actually almost easier from first person than from third. Okay, how much space do I have in the drills? One drill is empty, two drills are almost full. Alright, that should probably do it. Alright, time to get out of here. Oh, 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 oh no. I hate seeing that sort of rubble, it means I've hit something too hard. Something's taken some damage. I wonder if I just hit one of the drills too hard. It can take a fair bit of pounding, but they can't... Oh. Can I get over that? No. Alright. Um, right click. Seems like my right click drilling was much better than my left click. Now, I'm going to have to be super ridiculously careful with my connection here, because I don't have the parts to repair it if I damage it. So what I might do is get myself pretty close. About there, yep, that's lock. Then I will adjust my overrides. And as it comes through, and it's close to it, I'll press the connect button and hopefully everything will go okay. Oh, yes, I'm connected, yes. Okay, right. Clear out these drills so I can go in, collect some more nickel and then come back. That's a fair bit of ice I collected too. Maybe it wasn't such a bad thing to do some left-click drilling at the start. Um, no, I'll ditch that too. Okay. Uh, disconnect. Let's go back in, collect some nickel. I'm just going to collect a nice small load, I think. The less, the better, so that I can still get decent control over the vehicle. I don't need to collect a lot to be better than my suit. So I think I need to just keep that in mind when I'm doing this. Not get greedy and overdo it, basically. Again, very much need some situational lights. Because of the high-powered spotlights, not having um, situational glow the way that the vanilla spotlights do, I'm going to need to get some interior lights on here so that I can see around myself reduce the risk a bit of me smacking straight back into a wall and destroying the rear rotor. There we go. I might just head back with this much nickel because I think it might be enough. But before I head all the way back, I'm going to grab some stone from that bo- uh, not stone, some iron from that boulder. Because I think that'll be long term a bit more useful. Or at least medium term a bit more useful, I guess. Long term the nickel probably would be. Cool. We have got 20 something thousand nickel ore. That should have me covered for a little while to come. Let's get our wheels and on the trailer on. Then, see how well I can do with collecting stuff from here. Now, that looks reddish, but that is stone. I promise you, that is stone that is coming out. It is not iron. How's uh, my inventory looking? Drills are quite full. I think I might just head home. I could probably turn off the ejectors and take that stone with me too. Uh, the ejectors are here. Alrighty, let's get back onto base. Yes! Success! <laughs> look, at the, look at the line of stones rolling down the hill. <laughs> That's really cool. We're all just bunching up down the end there. Nice. Oh my. Right. So, the thing that was suggested to me that I quite liked was to do dot 
before anything that's a boulder. And I think that's quite a good solution. I wonder if that's one I already marked. And it was the other one that I missed. Either way. So the dot is a boulder, the no dot is an underground. So I'll have to rename all of the current ones at some point so that they fit that naming scheme. But it's nice and quick. It's a simple one press for the thing that you actually want to know isn't a fully underground deposit. And I mean, once I've found underground deposits of everything, I suspect I'll just ignore boulders. Uh, so if I find an underground iron deposit, I will likely stop worrying about marking any iron boulder that I come across. And I'll only mark the um, underground deposits from that point, or at least not worry about it until I run it out. But I haven't, I haven't really run out an iron deposit in a long, long time. Especially now that stone produces some. And right now, I'm also running low on the old water. Oh, oh yeah, I've avoided the tree. <laughs> Even while I was in the menu. <laughs> I thought I was going to mess that one up. Uh, yes. Nice. And I then have to start thinking about what I'm going to do for my motorbike. So I think that was primarily what I was getting these, this nickel for. The plan was to do the underground mine and build the motorbike this time around. Okay, what I'm going to do, I was just thinking about the batteries charging in the hydrogen engines. I don't really want them, the hydrogen engines working for the base because that's not going to get me very far. So I'm going to turn off my hydrogen engines now. Once all that ore is processed, I'm going to disconnect from the base and turn my engines on and run them until all the ice in here is dry. Because I've got quite a bit of ice. It'll take a fair while to get through, I think. And it could be worth it to get the charge on these batteries since they're now below 25%. And I think they'll charge quicker off those engines than they will off the two very slowly turning turbines. I was thinking about the motorbike and the orientation of this battery is all wrong. So I'm going to build a fresh vehicle entirely for the motorbike. This, I think this is orientated well for a lifting vehicle, which I will get onto soon now that I'm getting enough resources to hopefully do a decent build in one go of the base. That's what I'd like. I'm going to do a bit of resource collection and build a few cheaper vehicles and then I will do a larger bit of progress on the base. But perhaps I should do the corner towers of this building first so I can get the extra turbines up before I do that. That might come in first. However, motorbike is what I'm going to do now. Maybe I'll come around here. Those explosions. <laughs> I really hope that explosion was from an unknown signal, not anything else, because I just heard an earth-shattering kaboom, which I will hopefully remember to make louder in post, because they always seem much quieter when I'm doing the edit than when I'm playing. Alright, so I'll need to get a rotor added onto the side of the building so that any battery I build is in the right spot. I have to think about this motorbike, because it can't be too small, and it also, frustratingly, because I'm on the on Omicron here, I have to have this motorbike with a cockpit. Or I don't have to, but it would be very impractical if I didn't. I need to make sure that I can have it piped up and it can generate oxygen for me. Otherwise, running away in it is just a recipe for me dying. It's not actually going to get me anywhere useful. Continue my collection of rotors attached to the base in random, random positions. So a suggestion I was given last time, which I think is actually something I need to keep in mind when I build the proper garage later, which is I need to put a rotor in a small grid conversion, but I need to put that rotor on some pistons so that I can move it around and also spin the rig so that I can reach different spots. I don't think I'll do that just yet for the builds I'm currently doing, but it would be a nice way to ensure that my wheels can always get built because I can just move the thing up and down. What I might do here is place that, get rid of that, add my small head, put my rotor lock on, and because small grid pistons are quite cheap, 
I'm going to throw a small grid piston on here. So if I put a little piston on like that, then start building, I'll be able to go a fair bit up and down from where I start. And I think that'll be worth it. I am, however, realizing that putting anything on top of that is going to be an interesting exercise for me. Um, I have to bring the Goofy over here so I can do that. Oh no. Yes! <laughs> Brute Force wins again! Uh, Alright, that should be a decent starting position. Let's get the parts we need for that. And that piston will make my life a lot easier. So this will be my current build position, I think. The other spot over here is almost certainly going to be something that I destroy when I put in the extra four corners. Ooh, you are close up there, buddy. I am lucky that that didn't come any close, that that wasn't close enough to spawn any drones. Can't see any drones anyway. Right. Anyway, motorbikes. So, like the Goofy 2, a motorbike design in vanilla is mostly going to need to use gyro overrides to keep itself upright. However, I've done a little bit of playing around with this recently, and you can get away with just a very well balanced vehicle if you use 5x5 wheels. The 5x5s are so fat that reasonably well balanced, you can actually just drive around using gyro control without, act without needing to have any overrides, which makes the driving experience much more fun. Plus the extra ground clearance of a 5x5 is always nice. So I'm gonna go with 5x5s even though it's gonna make this motorbike quite large and kind of bring it to the point of, why didn't you just build a four-wheel vehicle? I didn't build a four-wheel vehicle because this is going to be fun, I think. So, to start off with, I think for a motorbike, I really should go with a sleek-looking cockpit. It's going to make it a bit bigger, but... Come on. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta try and have something that looks a bit more interesting, I think, anyway. Okay, <laughs> let's begin again. <laughs> I've already placed a few blocks, but I was talking in circles, so let's start again. I'm starting with a fighter cockpit because I think for a motorbike style vehicle it will look much nicer having a sleeker cockpit. I've then placed an O2H2 gen because I think to again fit in with the whole motorbike thing i should have some hydrogen engines so it's got that brrr, the, the rumble even though it's not really a motorbike rumble it's more of a diesel truck engine rumble but still it's a rumble and i think it's what i should go with it means that i'd be able to get out of the vehicle and recharge the vehicle by mining some snow if i've driven too far and I run out of battery. It just gives me more options, so I think having it as backup would be quite useful. Now the challenge I'm met with because of that is I will need to make this quite a lot longer if I'm going to have hydrogen engines on there. However, I think what maybe I should do is maybe place one up top like that if I put a few conveyor blocks in. So Oh, no. Better idea. Let's grind that off, because I placed it with the wrong orientation. So I placed it that way. I think if I place it this way, I'll then be able to pop an engine up there and a battery underneath. A big battery. And that's the full length of the body. I can do a little bit of greeble around it. I can place the couple of gyros I need. But that should be the full length that the center of the body requires. Then all I need to do is get the 5x5 wheels in position in front of it and to the rear of it. And I might even deliberately place the rear wheel a block lower than the front, just to give it a bit more of that sleek profile. Uh, let's get these bits built now. With the capacity of the Goofy 2, it's almost tempting to build a hydrogen engine onto the base and try and power the base with a bit of hydrogen at the moment. It does take a lot of effort on my part, but a few loads of this full of ice might go a fair way. I don't know. 
might not be worth the trouble. It often feels like once I start getting going with hydrogen engines, they aren't worth the trouble, unless I actually have access to an ice lake. The concentration of ice that you get from snow is just too low. You have to mine for so long to get a bit of power. This is reminding me of something I very much needed to do a long time ago. Production. Tools. Let's get me a better welder. I deserve a better welder at this point. That was a long time in coming and should have been done a long time ago. I'm always so slow to do that these days. I used to be really focused on getting the best tools straight off the bat, but at some point I became way too patient for my own good. Oh, with all that nickel I can make a few extra batteries on the base too. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to do on the base today. I was going to put the uh, daily needs, a few of the daily needs things on there. So I think I'll raise this up just a little bit. There we go. And then I need to figure out how wide I need to have the mounting point for a 5x5 five five wheel. So the suspension is three blocks wide. The wheels are also kind of three-ish, two and a half, sort of. So I should probably be four blocks out, I think. I'm certainly going to end up placing some of this wrong. But as I said last time, it's an investment into the future because I need this vehicle so that I have something cheap to run away in. And yeah, it's not super, super cheap, but it's still cheaper than losing the Goofy 2. One thing I am going to have to do with this design is I'm going to have to waste, put some unnecessary, well, arguably aesthetic only blocks, but really they're there for balance, for weight balance, so that I won't have to use the gyros all the time, or at least have to use the gyros on override, I should say. Okay, so there I'm thinking. Yeah, that's pretty centered. Look at that. And then what I have to do on the other side is place the suspension in the same position and use that as my weight counterbalance. But you can see how much clearance I'm going to get, especially if I drop down the rear one block below where this is. I'll have a bit of extra. I should be able to fake a little bit of extra clearance. One of the things that ore scrap changes the most is that it makes it so greebling if you're not thinking it through can actually get quite expensive, which is good because if you want something to look nice, it should cost a little bit more or it's not bad if it costs a little bit more to do that. We go with a five by five on this side, like so. So the wheel can't be placed, but it's balanced weight. And you can see that the wheel isn't perfectly centered, but it is pretty close. So I think it'll be fine. So that's my balanced weight at the front, and then I just got to figure out how I'm going to attach the wheel at the rear. And again, this should be the right, even though it looks like, even though in some ways it looks like it should be left, it, it definitely should be right for the orientation of the wheel tread. Alright, got to do a little bit of greebling underneath because I'm not sure how easily I'll get under here afterwards. Or at least that's going to be my excuse. Uh, let's start by working out how I'm going to get this transitioned at the front, I think, in that, and then I think I'll make this mostly curved by putting those across there, even though that's going to make the greebling to match the cockpit annoying. Although maybe I'll just go with slope and just ignore the other two bits, or I'll put uh, one of these on each side. Like that. Yeah, I could do that. Gives me a nice curve to work off. I might add some extra thickness under here, but I'm not really sure how to. <laughs> so uh, that may or may not happen. That'll protect my cockpit, I'll protect my battery, my generator. Oh, and the generator, conveniently, given the shape of the fighter cockpit's uh, connection, I will be able to move my bottles into it while I'm in the cockpit. And I just emptied out my bottle into the cockpit. <laughs> Whoops. I now have a low O2 inside the cockpit. 
<laughs> uh, splitsy. What are you doing today? I'm having a shocker. At least I haven't blown anything up yet. I will be adding some white detailing to this thing. Make it a bit more interesting, but for now I just wanted to get the undercarriage done. Since that'll be the hard bit to do once it's disconnected from that rotor. Not super happy with how it's turned out, but it's not horrible. Yet. Alright, we've got an unknown signal landing. This might be a good opportunity to test out the bike. <laughs> I think. Um, the rest of this I should be able to reach from on top of it. Oh, no. No, I do not wish to respawn. Might add that there, because that's another attachment point for that wheel, and do that for all of them. Add these as just a bit of something else that can hit the ground that might hold the wheel on, maybe. Although, I'd also need to add an extra piece here for it to actually work. Yeah, do that. That gives me two attachment points. Just double what I got. It's not great, but it's double. Okay. I think we're good to disconnect now. Here we go. Oh, hang on. No. Uh, let's pop the handbrake on the hotbar so this doesn't go rolling away. And I also need to get some gyros on there. I'll do more detail work on this motorbike as I go along, and once it's complete, I will definitely publish it on the workshop. It's just not going to be completely ready today, I think. Okay, before we lose daylight and before we lose that signal, let's disconnect. Okay. So there we go. With Q and E, I can just roll a little bit. I think I should have done the rear wheel the other way, I suspect. One thing I do know with this wheel setup is I need to have the strength quite high. But I should probably get out of the way of that mount first. I think I'm going to have to set a gyro override. Just to stop it rolling quite so much. Let's go grab some bottles and then head off to that unknown signal just because. <laughs> because I can't think of a better testing ground for the, for the motorbike. Wheel strength to gradually increase that until there's no compression at all, pretty much. So go up to 20. Crank my power, increase my speed limit, and then toggle override. Now that gyro, I think what I might do is actually reduce its power down to 50%. So when I turn its override on, it doesn't do quite... Oh, maybe I need the full power of it. I think I might need another gyro. I can't seem to manage to roll this thing. It doesn't want to roll. <laughs> I need more gyro! Dang it! That is the risk with this sort of thing. You do need a lot of gyro power to do roll. Um, gyros just don't seem to have much strength in that regard. So I'll pop one there. And I'll pop a matching one on the other side. Should be able to get this thing upright. I'm kind of fighting the override of that other one, aren't I? Now I'll put the override on. And the overridden one should... Is it going to be your? Yeah. About that. Seems to keep it balanced. That's not too strong. Time for me to roll. Oh yeah. I can either mouse steer or I can uh, wheel steer. Both will work with this setup. But this thing is super fun. Like, I've currently got the gyro override off so that I have to control the steer, but uh, the roll I should say. But riding around on something like this is super fun. <laughs> Not the most practical of vehicles, but they are actually pretty all-terrain because you do get a lot of clearance out of it, especially with the 5x5s. And you can be fairly comfortable going quite quickly, and as was intended, it's not terribly expensive. Although that might be. I am going to need to bring spare parts. And good to know that is an attachment point for that thing. And I didn't bring any steel plate. Okay. All right, Splitsy, be a lot more careful. I think what I might need to do is build some sort of connection over the top of the wheel suspension mounts 
so that I can attach to the uh, to the back side of the suspension as well as the front side rather than trying to go lower because those blocks are just a bit too close to the ground I think I did also fail to add lights which is almost trademark of me these days <gasps> that's steep still I think this works so yeah the basic idea with a motorbike like this is set up your overrides have at least two gyros so you got some gyro control as well as the overridden one and make sure your wheels are fairly center mounted. Uh, you can do this with 3x3s as well as 5x5s. The 3x3s obviously behave a bit more like a motorbike because they're skinnier wheels. Uh, but then you have a bit more balance problem because the fat wheels obviously give me a bit of a platform. You could go with double 3x3 wheels um, to kind of create a similar feel to this. I just like the simplicity of having the, sim uh, the single wheel front and back. So I decided to go with 5x5s. Here we are at my signal. Plus, the handbrake, because this thing's so light, works really, really well. So I am happy with this vehicle. Yay, a badger drill. Woohoo! Has this got any goodies in it? Ooh, I got some food! Nice! I cannot complain with that. Hey, get back here. That's what I get. I got some cucumbers, some potatoes, then some other stuff that I've apparently eaten already because I was hungry and then got 40 steel plate, which isn't too bad. Yeah. Nice. I think I might have that override a little stronger than I need it. But it's pretty close to right, I think. Okay, Ladybug, which way are you going? You are coming straight for me. Wonderful. I am driving away from here. Let's test out the motorbike for, sh for real. Because this is what it's for. It's for running away from these things. Does need headlights though. It really badly needs headlights. <gasps> How did I not destroy myself then? That was incredibly lucky. It's still getting closer. It is still getting closer. This could go badly. Ah, stop hitting the ground. I must get out of here. I'm going to create so many divots with this thing it seems like. Maybe I should have gone with a, a little buggy or a trike. <laughs> oh, I think I'm clear. Yeah, I think I'm clear. Seriously? How many divots? Really? <laughs> the rate I'm going, I'm going to need to turn on voxel cleanup uh, once I get some grids near my mine so that it doesn't get cleaned up. Ugh, potholes everywhere. I think I am going to have to swap around that extra, the, uh, one of the wheels to the opposite side to get this to balance better. Oh no. I'm not far from home. It's okay. Cool. Well, this thing's ready to mostly terrify me and barely function, so I'm happy. Before I forget to do it, what I need to do now is add a vanity plate to the Goofy because <laughs> it was suggested to me and I completely forgot to do it for two episodes so it's a thing that's happening displays interior plate I think is mainly what that's going to need it's probably need a computer too but I'm going to put a little um little number plate on here that reads Goofy 2 so where to put this though I want it to be kind of low down somewhere but I also want it to be visible no I think on the wheel is the best spot it's frivolous but then I love frivolous stuff more often than not there we go <laughs> it's got it and the other thing I need to do is add the interior lights that I was talking about earlier before I forget them and 
I would also probably get something out of having a couple of extra interior lights on the base somewhere so I can see even at night yay and when I eventually get the easy solar script running it'll control the lights and they'll all all of the ones that I want off during the day will turn off so I'll save a bit of power that way but for the moment I think I can bear the cost of 30 watts of power maybe or 60 watts or whatever it is I think it's 60 well since that's all done I suppose I should get on to the next important thing which is something that was making a lot of people nervous and that is the fact that this is connected to this with only a line of small conveyor tubes I should probably greeble this a little bit to get some sort of stability or security to how this is connected. Uh, that's going to need some steel plate to do. Definitely wanted at least one row. Maybe I will just go one row. So, coming all the way. Ooh. Yeah, that one. And then that one. And we go full cube. The reason I decided to change to the full cube there was I didn't want the rotor parts sticking through and clipping. So, because it looks a bit funny. So this will be a bit better, I think. So this will make <laughs> this thing a lot more likely to survive my horrible driving. Oh, a little more likely to survive my horrible driving. <laughs> That's going to make a lot of people far more comfortable with this thing. Uh, understandably. They were nervous about me driving around with something that was only connected by conveyor tubes. Now, underneath as well, I'm going to probably go with these. I guess I could just go... I think I'll just go straight through, rather than putting an extra bit of difference in for that block. Yeah, that looks a lot more robust now. And that thrush is incoming, so... I really wish I had put spotlights on the thing earlier. Um, I need to build this because it's night. I need spotlight. Alright, let's get out of here. Uh, maybe I will head towards the mine. It's probably the safest way to go. So I can get this underground. <gasps> oh man. Okay, I'm... <laughs> I'm not feeling this thing is as good as the ones I've built in the past. Maybe I should have gone the unicycle. <laughs> I felt like I was able to drive it better. <laughs> oh man. I don't even know what just blew up either. I'm hoping it was just a piece of armor. Splitsy driving at night. It's never a phrase that should be spoken without fear. Right now we're seeing the downsides of the 5x5 wheels. Uh, with 3x3s you can get a steeper angle of lean available to you for the motorbike. With the 5x5s, the angle between the suspension and the wheel, so the lowest point of the suspension and the lowest outer point of the wheel, um, isn't very steep, that angle. It's quite flat. So you have to be pretty... Uh oh Flat to the terrain. And... That I'm finding quite difficult to do. Oh, you're kidding me. Alright, I have to draw out some ice. I might not get away from this one. Oh no, I'm getting away from it. And because I built no 2H2 gen on this thing, I should survive. Oh, I took out a whole suspension. I am so lucky I took out the one that wasn't holding the wheel. I am incredibly lucky that that's the case. Yeah. I'm going to say that the uh, motorbike is a bit of a bust. <laughs> uh, I'm going to wait until you guys give me some suggestions because I know some people will come up with some good ideas about how I could improve it before I completely scrap the idea, but much as I was excited to try it, I'm not convinced this works. It's... Uh, it's not really a great escape vehicle. I'm having to be too careful with how I drive it for it to properly function that way. 
I would need to have, really for a proper escape vehicle, something that I can just barrel along in and have little fear that it's going to tip so that I can still look at where my enemy might be. Uh, and something small as well. So I think I'm going to need to revise it a fair bit. I may have to go with a trike. The motorbike isn't a complete success, but I've learned a few things. I have a bit of a better idea of what I could do next on it. I do want to try the wheel on the opposite side. And as I said, if you guys have any ideas on how to fix it, that would be great. The Goofy 2 now has its vanity plate. And... The, <laughs> the detector trailer doesn't look like it'll fall apart in a stiff breeze. So, that's a win. I didn't die. I think I can be fairly happy with that. Next time, I think what I might do is try and do a bit of resource collection at the start. And because I've now got... How much? 6,000 iron there, 2,000 nickel, another 2,000 nickel, and another 8,000 iron. So I've got a fair bit of stuff. I think I will lay out the four corners of this building, so the other two corners, which will probably mean I'll have to rejig how this connector is working. But lay them out, get the turbines and the turrets up and running on them so that I can try and get this space worked out, including a proper refinery and air tightness. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then.